Hello. Have you ever thought about getting a pocket planner? Have you seen them online and thought, oh, those look cute, but you don't quite know if it's for you, or maybe you've seen one and you think, I'm really tempted to get that, but is it the right thing for me? This video is for you, if that's the case. I'm gonna go through today some differences in brands in terms of the ring size and labeling and how roomy they are. I'm going to tell you why pocket size is really good. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite tips to make pocket size work. And I'm going to be talking a little bit as well about what pocket plus is. So if that sounds like your thing, then stay with me. And if you aren't a subscriber already, oh, I'd love it if you would join me. <laughs> it would mean a lot to me. So thank you. Anyway, let's get started. So first of all then, let's look at some pocket size brand differences. So uh, I personally really like Motum planners and also Filofax planners. I've tried some of the Van der Speck planners as well and they are absolutely gorgeous. And my knowledge of them is mostly limited to that. Lots of different brands have pocket size and I'm just going to show you some of the differences because I don't think that pocket size in one brand is necessarily going to be the same as another one in terms of the features you get and how usable they might be for you. So my first experience with a pocket planner was a Filofax one. It's not this one. This one is a recent one, but I had a Filofax croc black one and I found that it was gorgeous. I loved it, but it didn't lay flat when I was writing in it and it just felt a little bit clunky. The other thing I noticed, which this one has in common, it had quite small ring size in it and that is great if you are going to be taking it around with you. I'll come back to that in a bit, but it can be a little bit limiting. Now, a lot of the Filofax pocket planners, let me just show you, see if you can see that properly on there, have quite small rings, they're quite compact. Let me compare this to my Moturn planner. Can you see from the top, if I show you like that, one is a little bit more roomy than another. If I open it up so you can get a better view, you can see how the rings are a little bit more chunky in the one than the other. Can you tell that from the video? Is that easy enough to see? So depending on what you like to do with your planners and how much you like to put in them, ring size is definitely going to be a consideration. So Filofax tends to be on the smaller side and the Moton ones tend to be quite big. And also with the Moton ones, you tend to be able to replace them really easily as well. They just have two screws. So if you have a small size ring set and you want a larger one, you can normally just switch it out really easily. So some other planner brands then, like Van der Speck, for example, you can customise. It's more pricey to customise them, but good grief, it makes it so much easier so you can order your absolute perfect planner. So there is that to consider as well. So let me move on to how roomy they are, not just the ring size. So. This is going to be more important if you are really fond of having tabs in your planner, if you like carrying a pen around you in your planner, and also if you want to consider or have the option of considering something like pocket plus size later on down the line. Now, let me show you my Molden. So this one then, I wouldn't say is particularly roomy. And I felt in this one that when I set this up, I needed top tabs rather than side tabs. Now look, that looks fine as it is, doesn't it? But when you close it, can you see how snug the pen loop is to the side of your pages? If I show you from the top, does that, oh, let me just try and get a good angle for you. <laughs> there you go. So you can see then that the pen loop rests pretty much snug against the rest of your planner. Now with a bigger ring size, that might not be a big issue because you've got room for your planner tabs but from this one you don't have that much room so is that something that you're going to value or not top tabs tend to be absolutely fine as do bottom ones as well you can see i've got a little page marker sticking out of mine there but this is not necessarily a very roomy cover so if i show you is a comparison my moturn one my moturn one as well look how snug those pages are 
and how close they come to the edge of the planner when it's shut. Again, ring size will do that for you. If you have a smaller set of rings, then it will sit a little bit further in. So you've got a trade off between ring size and how wide these pages poke out at the edge. I think from memory, I upgraded these rings and I switched them out from the smaller set that it came with. I could be wrong. I think I did that. So the Motown pen loops though, for example, are quite squashy. They are quite flexible. You can have them so they poke out quite easily, whereas some of the Filofax ones are quite stiff. You see that doesn't want to lay flat, that wants to spring back into place. They do wear with time, especially if you've got a really nice quality leather, they will kind of wear in and get more comfortable, like a really nice comfortable pair of shoes. But I used some side tabs with this one on my task cards, but again, mainly top for that reason. The larger, the larger ring size that I switched out. So bear that in mind. But this is not your only option. So some brands then will give you a lot more room around the edges or some particular models and varieties will give you more room around the edges. And if you can get hold of a planner in a shop, like a physical shop that you can go to, you can suss it out. You can make sure the planner is shut, have a look at how much room you've got, top and bottom of your pages to see what you've got room for. But let me show you, this is a very old, well, I suppose relatively speaking, a very old Motem Versa cover. Now this one in particular, the design is different at the moment, but it's got a planner within a pocket. So with this one, the idea is you can take it out if you need to, or you can use it as a notebook, but the pages on this one are a lot further away from the edge of your planner. So you've got a lot more room. So don't presume that one brand across the different types is gonna be exactly the same. If this is something that is important to you, I would really, really suggest going on to something like Facebook, asking pocket planner owners like which ones they've got are particularly roomy and what kind of features you're looking for because to be fair, some of these differences do have a pretty big knock-on effect to how you might want to use them. So let me talk about something really important <laughs> and that is labeling. Now I'm gonna take out my file effects out of the way because this one is fine. Molden is, sorry, not Molden, Moterm is a different story altogether. If you look for a pocket planner, you will commonly see it labeled as an A7 planner if you go to Moterm to get it. That is their name for that. That does not correspond to the A7 paper size. Let me just show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna flash up on the screen some information I've taken from the Motem page. And as you can see on there, it says A7 size. It's got the size of the planner itself. It's got the size of the rings that it comes with. Brilliant, I love it when shops give you loads of dimensions so you can see what you're really getting. And as you can see from the paper, the paper is a standard-ish <laughs> 12, 0.3, although technically it should be 12, and 8.2, although again, technically it should be 8.1. But basically you've got pocket size planner paper in there. Now they call it A7. I'm not entirely sure why. One day I will find out, but A7 paper is a very different size. So if you say that you are looking for an A7 planner, it doesn't necessarily always mean you're looking for a pocket planner, which this is. So I get a lot of questions in the shop. I've got an A7 planner, what will fit? And I know from experience that it's a Motown pocket, but technically you have a pocket planner. Pocket size is when you have the paper size of 81 millimeters by 120 millimeters. And I'll show you some information later when I go a little bit more into page sizes. But the A paper sizes, if you've seen my previous video on A6, I'm gonna flash that up. The A paper sizes are something that is fixed. It's not open to interpretation. It's the same anywhere you go. It's just that most countries use it, apart from, I think, the US and Canada, but Motem on this one, I've just labeled it a little bit different, but I still love them. 
<laughs> so that's that one then. And if I move on from Moto for a minute, I can't show you a demonstration because I don't have one, but Louis Vuitton also do a pocket planner. And like lots of other luxury brands like Mulberry do um, a pocket size planner as well. But the Louis Vuitton one is normally labeled as a PM planner. So Louis Vuitton tend to have different sizes. I'm by no means an expert. I own nothing that fancy <laughs> at all. But across their bags as well, I recently discovered that they have the same size conventions. So the GM is the large version, the MM is the medium, and then the PM is the small. PM in their case is a pocket planner. Okay, so moving on from that one then i'm going to talk to you now about the benefits of pocket size and again i'm going to go a little bit more into some uh brand variations on this one too so i have i'm going to move this onto a side i have loved pocket planners as wallets and the fact that they are so portable and so light especially really if they've got small ring sizes as well they are great as wallets and you can see in this one this is where i hope i find some money inside no <laughs> a lot of them have the big back pocket in fact some brands the larger models don't have a big back pocket whereas the pocket ones do because again it's this perfect size that you can use to take around with you with your cash and your cards and it's brilliant for that so that isn't necessarily a rare feature. My Motown planner as well had the big back pocket, even though I didn't use this. I've got a note from my daughter in there. <laughs> even though I didn't use that as a person itself, it would be brilliant for it. And again, they normally have some sort of zip feature as well. So you can use them for coins and bits and pieces. So I love that. It's also think a bit less overwhelming if you don't tend to write very much and you've got an a5 planner you might think oh my goodness i've got nothing to write but in the pocket planner it helps you to just condense everything down and it helps you to just be really really brief and it causes you to just focus on what you just really need to think about which I personally think is really really handy so you've got no wasted space and to be fair if I just show you this one which I used this is kind of like a streamlined version <laughs> this one which I used for quite a while as my regular planner they are just as useful if you use them carefully and if you plan them out really carefully the size difference doesn't need to be an issue it just needs a bit of thought if you're not used to it so far so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to share with you some tips to make pocket planners work for you so i can't actually remember <laughs> what i've got in this but it's gonna help me uh, <laughs> go through this with you so what i would suggest is the use of stickers or color coding that kind of thing so i've got stickers here for the days that were really important because there is no way i'm putting anything in there but if you use color coding and stickers you can sort of identify what you need to have so i've got like delivery stickers and grocery shopping stickers and all sorts of stuff so it really really helps if you keep your content brief and also what I would really suggest, so I really like to use in fold outs in this one, but it's a real game trying to write on them. But what makes it a lot easier is putting slits in your rings. This is not my idea. This is something that I've seen on the internet loads of times, but goodness, it makes it an absolute breeze. So putting slits in your rings means that if you've got a particularly full planner, you don't have that awful situation where you pop your rings open and your pages just go and just explode out of the planner so i would really recommend slits in your rings as well just so you can get things out really really easily i would also consider on a related note fold outs so fold outs allow and this is a week in here i've got so much space in that that really is going to be 
getting on for how much space I've got in a double page personal spread. It's just laid out differently. And the beauty of planner inserts is that they come in all different shapes and sizes and everything. So you can really focus on something that helps you and gives you as much space as you need. They can be absolutely fantastic for that. So I would encourage you, if you haven't considered it before, try some fold outs. They are wonderful. I'd also consider your handwriting. <laughs> now, I am not going to lecture you on writing neatly in your planner because I clearly am incapable of that. But don't just resize stuff down. If you are a printable person, you love printing out your own stuff, you have something in a larger size, don't just scale it down when you print it because you're going to scale down any boxes, any lines, sections, that kind of thing. Have some inserts that are designed specifically for pocket size. So for example, when I do mine, like I always kind of design from scratch. So like if I'm doing like a grid layout, I'll have a different number of spaces on the page, you know, because I don't want to make it too teeny tiny as far as writing is concerned. But also if you've got big handwriting, who cares? Get something with bigger space on there or get something without lines, without grids, so you can just do what you naturally do. But make sure the inserts that you've got really suit you and the way that you like to work. What I'd also suggest, and I'm just wondering if I took these out, and I'd also suggest is, oh my did I took them out. Have a think about how you want to use your inserts. So let me just have a quick, this is all the stuff I took out. <laughs> So I'd have a think about if you want to use daily. Oh yes, that's it. So daily stuff. Now my daily pages, I put on two sides like that. So it was a day to two pages, which I wouldn't dream of in most planner sizes, but this worked really well purely because the usable page size that you've got, if you're going to write in your planner when it's actually in there. You don't get very much room against the rings. So I wanted to make sure that if I was writing on this page, I wouldn't have to write very much because I'm right-handed. The rings would get in the way. But if it was a day on two pages, I could put a little bit on that one, more on that one, and it was completely fine. So have a think about the layout again. So which hand do you use to write? Are you going to be taking your inserts out to write on them or not? see what works for you, try and find something that works for you or approach a shop that you like and ask them to design something for you if all else fails. So those are my tips to make pocket size work. But now I'd like to show you what we mean by pocket plus. So what is pocket plus? So I'm gonna flash up a comparison on the screen at the moment. And I'm gonna show you on here pocket size and pocket plus side by side and also overlaid as well so you can see the difference there's not much really really not much difference but it does kind of make a difference when you're using it so the hole punching is completely the same you get a little bit extra on the side but it does make it feel that bit bigger so pocket plus them is something that planners have kind of like adapted over time. And I have some tips for making this work. Now, the planners that I've used that have been pocket sized have just been regular pocket, nice and straightforward. But if you do want to try pocket plus, there are some things then that you should be careful of. Pocket plus is a little bit less common. So if you like to buy your planner stuff pre-made, then you may have a little bit more of an issue in finding that. So. I wouldn't recommend mixing sizes so much. Not if you can get away with it. It's always better to pick a size to have it for your whole setup and stick to that. So just make sure if you want to go down the pocket plus route that you can find everything that you're going to want to use before you start. So if you have got a smaller cover, so if I can whip out this one again to show you, now, if I was to fit Pocket Plus in there, I would have real issues with my pen. And if it was a well-worn in planner, if it was a bit more roomy, that might be okay. But 
that extra little bit on the side the extra I think it's eight millimeters or so on the side it would force the pages to come right to the edge kind of like they have done here now in this one because I've switched the rings pocket plus would actually come beyond the edge of the planner fine for the top not for the side so it is something that you're going to have to check and works with your particular planner depending on how roomy that cover is the other thing that i would say to bear in mind is if you're mixing sizes to bear in mind things like well what are your tabs going to be so if you're using dividers especially if you're using top tabs which may work better i would suggest to have those if anything in pocket plus size because if it's pocket size you're going to have more of those tabs concealed by anything pocket plus size inside it so if you do need to mix it up fine but try and get dividers if nothing else in pocket plus size so that it kind of like sets that framework for your planner if it's smaller it's fine if it's pocket plus it's fine too so that's kind of it really i hope that's given you something to think about if you've been considering trying to make pocket work i hope that has been a help for you i haven't been in pocket size now for a little while but i really really loved it and <laughs> my my favorite stupid tip <laughs> would be this might just be me showing my age a little bit but i have some really really cheap <laughs> reading glasses i got from primark <laughs> oh my goodness they made such a difference <laughs> my page looked huge my writing looked neat it was so good so <laughs> there you go anyway thank you very much i hope that's been useful if it has drop me a comment give this video a like and consider subscribing for me i would really really love that and i'll see you again soon okay thank you bye bye Thank you.